So in this video, I wanna go through all the biggest reasons why people are currently losing money on Shopify. If you've been subscribed to the channel, you've seen for the past few weeks, I have been doing subscriber store reviews. So what I thought I'd do is kind of collate, put together all the biggest reasons or biggest mistakes I see people making into a presentation in which we're gonna go through today in this video. What I've also done is exported this presentation into a PDF format. So if you do wanna get your copy of that for your own reference for 100% free, um, at the end of the video, head down into the video description and it'll be the top link. With that being said then, Thanks for tuning in guys. I hope you enjoy this one. Um, if you do, please do me the favor of hitting that like button. And of course, any comments or questions or video suggestions, um, please do leave them down below. I read every single comment. So if there is a question you guys want to ask me, just post it down below and I will get back to you. And with that being said then, let's jump straight into point number one. So welcome to the presentation. Let's jump straight into point number one, which is selling common slash boring products. Now over the past probably a couple of years, I've looked at probably a hundred different Shopify stores, if not more. And one of the biggest problems I see people having then is they see sell common slash boring products. Now they won't necessarily sell bad products. They can sell really high quality, decent products, but the products that you pick, then they have to be relevant to the platform in which you're going to market them on. So for example, then the majority of people who send me their stores will be trying to run Facebook ads. And there's certain products that will fit Facebook ads as a platform better than others. What you have to take into account is what's going through your customer's mind and why somebody is on Facebook. People go into Facebook to talk to their friends, spy on their friends, stalk people, watch funny videos. They're not necessarily there to buy things. So unless your products are interesting and capture people's attention, the chances are your customers won't even notice them. So by selling common and boring products, you're really going to struggle to kind of have any kind of success. So what I've done is I have listed three bullet points for products to avoid and three for products to sell. Some points to keep in mind next time you're doing your product research. So for products to avoid, then stay away from common products. So these are typically products that are easy to find in stores. So for example, then this pizza cutter, if you were to try and advertise this product, the majority of people who see this will know exactly where else they can buy this product, which increases the chances of them going elsewhere to buy it. Stay away from boring products. These are not interesting. They're not going to capture people's attention and advertising on a social media platform, then attention is everything. And then the third and final point is broad products. So when you have no specific audience, unless you have a huge budget and you can go out and target those large audiences and burn through an audience until Facebook learns who your customer is, then again, you're not going to have much success in the beginning. In terms of products to sell, then these are products that you should be actively trying to find. Number one, you should go for unique products. So these are never seen before, so not in store. So if somebody sees your product and they've never seen it before anywhere else, that increases the chance hugely that they're gonna buy that product from you. Point number two is exciting products. So these are products that people will see, perhaps some kind of functional products that does something that people are interested in. These types of products are much more likely to capture your audience's attention um, if they're exciting and interesting. And it also makes your customer more likely to share that product with somebody else to share the video ad, the image, whatever it is. Then the third and final point is a have products that has a specific audience. So the more specific and relevant your audience is to the products you're trying to sell, the higher success you're going to have. To give you some examples then of good versus bad, I have some product examples on the screen now, which you can see. Number one being the pizza cutter. This is obviously quite a common and boring products that everybody knows. You could probably go into Amazon, you can get this. You can go into John Lewis or to your local supermarket and get this product. And you could guess quite accurately as well how much you would expect to pay for this. So trying to make a profit selling this on Facebook ads is gonna be extremely difficult. Plus it's gonna be difficult to capture people's attention with a simple pizza roller. Product number two is this dog collar. Now these dog collars had over 20,000 orders on AliExpress, but in my opinion, they're not a good product to try and drop ship and sell on Facebook because it's just a boring product. It kind of applies to everybody. It applies to dog owners and cat owners, there's nothing that interesting about them. Whereas with the next product, the Pug Life Socks, even though it's within that same dog niche, it speaks to a specific kind of section of your niche, like a sub niche, I like to call it like a specific section. Therefore, when somebody sees something like this, if they own a pug, they're going to have more of a connection with this product and therefore they're much more likely to buy it. And then the fourth and final product is this 3D print rocket lamp. If you ask me, it's a pretty cool product. I've actually got one of these on order myself because I think it's just so cool. And it's the sort of thing when somebody sees it, I haven't seen this for sale anywhere else except for on AliExpress. And if your target audience hasn't either, then the chances are they're just gonna buy it from you because they will see you as the sole supplier and source for that particular product. That being said, let's move on to point number two, which is selling products that are too cheap. This is again, another common mistake I see people making. Only sell products for less than 20 pounds if you have a high convert and cross sell or upsell to bring up that average order value. To give you an example then of why this is so important, here's a screenshot from one of my ad accounts. You can see across these kind of half a dozen or so ad sets, 
my average cost per purchase is £9.61. Your results may be better than this, they may be worse than this, but one of my recommendations is then is to base your cost per purchase on £15. This way it will give you enough room to have those good days and bad days and overall on average it should work out profitable for you. So for example then to give you an idea of a bad product we have these earrings here. Again these have thousands of orders on AliExpress however they're just too cheap to try and make a profit on unless you have an upsell to go along with them. So for example then the cost of these is £4 delivered. To make these work and be profitable with your initial your front end ad sets you would have to retail these at £20 successfully or you would have to have some form of upsell that converts quite highly to make it profitable overall. One little tip here is to always calculate your break even ROAS. So when you are looking at your ad sets as an overview, especially if you have like 10 to 20 to 30, even 50 different ad sets in your ad account, you can see as an overview quite clearly which ones are profitable and which ones aren't. So that being said, let's move on to point number three, which is no branding or professionalism. This is something I see probably the majority of stores failing to do, regardless of whether you're running a general store, a niche store, or a one product store it's not an excuse to not have some form of a brand or at least make your store look professional so i've got a couple of slides now just going through kind of like the biggest points i see people failing to do under this particular category number one is having a logo now to be honest when i first started i didn't bother with a logo because there's big name brands out there that don't have logos um, and yet they work successfully however i've kind of changed my mind on that now the fact that you can get a logo a pretty decent logo on fiverr for less than 15 pounds then it's a small price to pay for the potential benefits and if we just take a look at the screenshot for example these two on the left the top one even though the logo is so basic and to be honest could be improved quite a lot it still looks a lot better and more professional than the bottom one in my opinion the other thing i've done as well is i've included the screenshot from fiverr so you can see just kind of the what you get for your money basically these are the best selling top rated budget under 15 pounds and we can see this one here i'm not sure if you'll see it on your screen but basically this one here has over a thousand reviews and 4.9 rating starting at 12 pounds 75 so you can get a pretty decent logo pretty good service um, for quite little price other things to improve the professionalism and branding of your store then number one on the left here we have a consistent color scheme i see it all too often this is a screenshot from a particular store of mine in fact if i make a border you can see what's included um, so we have the gray font at the top, we have orange price, we have yellow stars, we have green add to cart, we have red free shipping, blue kind of hook, orange kind of paragraph, and then green in design. There's just way too much going on unless this particular color scheme is suitable for the kind of niche. So for example, if you were running some kind of preschool shop selling toys and things, then perhaps it would work. But to be safe, then simple often works best. Go for neutral color schemes. Think of it as like if you're trying to do up a house and sell it, if the walls were pink and red and blue, obviously that's not gonna to apply to quite a lot of people's um, taste. Whereas if you just had neutral colored walls that were white, then it's kind of like a blank canvas. It's gonna to appeal to everyone. It's the same thing with your store. Just keep it simple and go with the neutral colors. Same thing for your background don't have some funky weird color for your background it just looks unprofessional in my opinion just stick with white and the chances are you're going to be absolutely fine it's going to give you the best chances um, of success moving on to point number four which is selling products that aren't in demand there's no two ways around this if nobody is currently buying your product then you're not going to make any sales the best place or i guess the easiest place to check this is using google trends it's free you can put specific search terms in there and it's going to tell you immediately immediately which countries are currently buying it and which ones aren't. Let's give an example then on the left here featured in one of my previous videos, Pilates bar, we can see that the search term of Pilates bar is the most popular it has been in the past five years by a long way. That is a strong, strong signal that people are currently looking to buy this particular product. And on the flip side of this then to show you what not to go into, what not to sell, we have the search term of heated blanket. We can see that there are current times during a year in which a product like this is popular, but where we're currently at right now on the end here near where my cursor is, this is the least popular or the least most popular time in which people are looking to buy this particular product so stay away from products like this there are some other places as well in which you can go to find this kind of information number one is google trends obviously which i've just talked you through number two is different product research softwares i personally use sell the trend if you did want an extended free trial make sure you check out the link in the video description below and then the other place you can go to as well is the aliexpress dropshipping center i'm not going to go into too much information in terms of that because i've featured it in other videos but if perhaps if you did want an updated video then just let me know in the comment section Moving on to the fifth and final point of this particular video then, and please bear with me on this one because it is such an important one. It's something I see probably 90 plus 
percent of people falling foul of and that is that they're too impatient now I understand when you start a new business and there's potential to make money then you can be quite excited and you want to rush into things and get things done as quick as possible but trust me that's not the best way to do things be eager but not so much that you're in a rush and you end up skipping corners so think the best way to kind of consider this or think about this is to think quality over quantity so for example instead of rushing to get your store together and putting 50 plus products on and not writing proper product descriptions for each one not checking the names of the variants and just putting a load of rubbish on your store that even though you've got loads of products on your store if they're all a bunch of rubbish it's just going to devalue your store and it's going to look bad in a customer's mind they're going to see your brand and your business as cheap and unprofessional um, and the chances are they'll just go somewhere else for the same product so some other common mistakes i see people making is number one is they rush into facebook ads and spend way too much money i cannot stress this one enough either this is definitely 100% a case of quality over quantity you're much better off running say two to three ad sets that are super high quality super good audiences and good ad creatives rather than having 20 different ad sets that are a bunch of rubbish because if you haven't got the quality you're not going to see the sales so break into things slowly take your time learn what you're doing and then when you find what works then double down on what you're doing then spend more money then start to duplicate things expand things out um, but until then if you're not making money spending say 20 pounds a day you're not going to be making money spending 200 pounds a day so just take it slowly and don't be too impatient you don't have to spend that much money in fact to make quite a considerable amount of money back I did a video on this in the past breaking down how much you truly have to earn how much you actually have to spend in order to make the average UK wage and if I remember correctly it was about a hundred pounds a day on Facebook ads which isn't that much it sounds like a lot but when you have the sales coming in from that return it kind of pays for itself so it's not money that you're coming out of your pocket so after a week you don't have to dish out 700 pounds of your own money basically the next point is incorrect variant names probably 50% of the stores I see do this this is an example the bottom left here of what I'm talking about you can see the variants are called colors however it's referring to different animals this looks super unprofessional and in a customer's eyes if you can't get this right Right, then what are your products going to be like are they going to be poor quality are they even going to get delivered so just make sure you go through every single product take the time to write decent product descriptions make sure the variant names are named correctly and trust me it's it's just something you're gonna to have to do if you want to be successful at this and third thing is an at gmail address now you can see some success of it but again you can get a G Suite account for I believe eight pounds a month is the current going rate so for that small outlay um, the benefits far outweigh than the actual cost of it does and the final thing then to wrap this video up is remove the tax included shipping calculator checkout go into your settings and your checkout language and remove these notes nobody is interested in tax it's going to be getting your customers thinking about something which is irrelevant distracting them from the most important thing which is obviously making a purchase and if you're offering free shipping across your store which I do recommend then again it just confuses customers because you're in one place you're saying free shipping but then in this place you're saying shipping calculator to check out these are default notes with most Shopify themes so something you need to check run a test order go through each screen just make sure everything is up to scratch and with that being said then guys thank you very much for watching um, I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please don't forget to comment like and subscribe I do have some free ebooks as well that I put together myself there's three different ones one on Facebook ad scaling um, a second one on product page templates and a third one on conversion rate so if you do want to get your hands on those um, they are free there will be a link in the video description below so make sure you head down there and check that out and finally then if you do want a full mentorship training program that includes my full support and guidance please do check out my ecom academy there's been tons of testimonials lately um, despite the current climate we're living in so if this is something you're interested in feel free to reach out ask me any questions um, and there will be a link as well down below in the video description for you guys to to check out with that being said then guys thanks very much for watching hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one <laughs> Thank you.